The idea that money should be eliminated, as Gregory Zinoviev proudly said, we are approaching the complete abolition of money because they were introducing payments in kind, was naive. In fact, an in-kind exchange economy is a barter economy, which is chaotic and inefficient and wasteful. Incredible inflation came from many of their policies, which they ignored because they were hoping to abolish money. But in fact, they had inflation and then money shortages, and the return to the barter economy often happened because of failed policies and uh, because of the problems that they were incurring um, and the destruction of their currency and was not a positive step on the road to socialism as they had um, been insisting that it was. They were returning to a crude system of barter and they began to realize this and eventually stopped saying things like was said at the Congress of the Soviet of National Industry, the People's Commissar of Finance in 1918 had said, finance should not exist in a socialistic community and I must therefore apologize for speaking on the subject. So they stopped doing that as much as they began to realize the waste incurred in a barter economy. They learned a few different lessons here. They learned that the elimination of money made it more difficult to arrange production. They learned that inequality can persist even without money because people can have an inequality of stuff and that can even sometimes be worse uh, because stuff can be uh, rare and that can make it worth even more and people can become even more envious. And attempts at worker control over money were also problematic, especially the problem of eliminating interest, which was a major cause of theirs before the revolution. And this ties in with the soft budget constraint that Alec Nove talks about. And he, he goes into some of the detail, and I go into some of the detail in my book, about the importance of interest or capital charges. Um, so again, it helps you to determine the true costs, or, or at least more closely, have a little bit of a better chance of determining the true costs. You still might have problems in a socialist economy in terms of determining prices, but the capital charge or interest is a very important part of determining the costs for a comparison between two projects. Also, the interest payment stimulates efficient use of resources and ensures efficient use of resources because if projects can't pay back the interest, then they won't be able to continue. When someone is able to earn interest, then they're able to continue to make other kinds of efficient investments because that can always get put back into their investment strategy. Sovietologist Alec Nove on this said that a capital charge has both macro and microeconomic effects and reminds one that the distinction between these categories is often blurred. This is the multiple uses of interest and why, like other prices in the economy, it has a self-regulation effect. It's self-regulatory and provides efficient macro and micro uses.